It's no secret that Brooklady is one of my favourite distilleries, and one of the things that I really love about them is the way that they promote transparency in the whisky industry. But this bottle of whisky from Brooklady is the absolute opposite of that. It's all about secrets and the unknown and the allure of mystery. This is Brooklady Black Arts 5.1. So bearing in mind that the whole point of this whiskey is that it's mysterious and makes you want to try it because you don't know anything about it other than that it's really expensive. Let's just go over the, the tin and the label and go over what we do know. So this is the 5.1 edition which is 24 years old, 24 aged years it says on the tin. It's a limited edition of 12,000 bottles. Okay. And we're led to believe that it's a single vintage from 1992. Unpeated Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, 48.4 ABV. It's a really beautiful tin, by the way. I do like all of these metal tins that Brooklady do. You're probably not going to be able to see this at all, but you can see that it's covered in lots of arcane, esoteric, alchemical symbols. Really nice tin and really nice bottle as well. So similar to the cyan blue, would you call that cyan that they normally use for the Brooklady blue bottles? This one is opaque. I don't know if this is painted or some sort of shrink wrap, but it is opaque and it is black the same as the tin. There is a bottling code on the back of this bottle. It does say Black Art 5 limited edition release. This is bottle number 2366 out of 12,000, which apparently is limited. And there's a bottling code which says 2016. So I'm going to guess this was bottled in 2016. I've had this for quite a while and it's nearly empty, you know. So that's really about all that we know. It's expensive, it's old, and they want you to think that it's a limited edition. So let's see how it noses and tastes and see if we can figure out the mystery. So one thing that does give some things away immediately, even though this is 24 years old or possibly older, although the fact that they've put the year on there makes you think that it should be a single vintage so it's all the same age, the colour of this leads you to think that it's probably or almost certainly had some sort of grape influence, port, probably, sherry, maybe, possibly red wine. So let's see how it noses. Probably about what you'd expect from the colour of this is that it's a very, very sweet nose, lots of sweet chocolatey notes, and very effervescent and confectionery notes as well. So there's a rather strong note of sherbet on there and also Turkish delight and by Turkish delight I mean the proper stuff as well as the milk chocolate coated stuff as well it's um, a strong theme of lots of different types of sweet fruits and in particular dark fruits as well so I'm getting a, a strong note again of confectionery some sweet and sour apple flavoured sweets Definitely a, a note of dark fruit and raspberry in there. It's also a little bit surprising that there is a note of some rather spicy European oak as well. So I was kind of expecting this to be a cask finished whiskey, but that spicy European oak note that I'm getting in there maybe hints that there have been some genuine sherry or port casks used in this. Also getting a certain grassy earthiness, which I'll usually associate with rye whiskey. So really something more the other side of the Atlantic there, maybe a, a rye heavy bourbon. But of course that could just be the, the bourbon casks that have been used to mature this, possibly 
wine-treated bourbon casks, or it could just be lots of other things coming together to confuse me a bit. But there's definitely a grassy earthiness to the nose of this one. Getting lots of sweet caramel as well. Sweet lots of things in this one, but some caramel. And there's also a slightly worrying note of ginger and wood spice and spicy, possibly virgin oak to this as well. So already, just based on the nose of this, I'm wondering if this is fitting with the theme of black art, that this has been a real alchemical endeavour to make this whiskey. It's really gone through a rather convoluted process of re-racking, possibly, probably, cask finishing, and lots of different types of casks have gone into this to make it what it is. And usually when that happens, when you're talking about things like the Laphroaig 4 Oak and the Dura 7 Oak, it really doesn't work. You tend to get all these different casks and they either clash horribly or they cancel each other out and you just get a substandard whiskey. But this, this does work. It's not my favourite thing, but it's definitely a style and it definitely works and it's good whiskey. So let's see how it tastes. Again, very upfront with the chocolate and sweet chocolate as well, milk chocolate. And again, that spicy European oak flavour that I saw, that I experienced on the nose. And again, that slightly gingery, raw, fresh virgin oak note. I'm not sure if that's something from the European oak that's really being sort of permutated and changed and modified by all the different things that are going on in there or if it really is a note of virgin oak it seems a little bit strange that they would use virgin oak in something like this but to be honest probably most people have a higher opinion of virgin oak than i do it's not something that i really enjoy and it's something that i think rarely works well it has to be said that this is a luxurious whiskey it's got a strong sweet syrupiness to it almost a medicinal syrupy sweetness it's a strong winey note as well red wine i'm going to say and lots of dark fruits probably coming from those wine casks that i think are probably in there and raisins black currants and there's definitely a cheesy savory salty note in there as well and I think that cheesy savouriness is probably coming from some pork casks. As for a finish, I'd say medium length, with some salty wine notes and chocolatiness. So really, a medium length finish on a 24-year-old whiskey is probably a little bit less than you'd expect. It's not a long finish. As for a grade, I'm going to give this one A- minus because I do really enjoy it. It's a little bit wacky, and... I'm definitely not going to go any further than an A-, but it is a really good whiskey. But I think probably more interesting a question is, what is it? How have they made this? And like I've said already, I think this is probably a combination of lots of different casks. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some bourbon, some sherry, port, red wine, possibly something odd like a, a really rye-heavy bourbon and possibly some virgin oak in there as well. So it really is a mixture. But in a way, it's impressive that they've managed to put all of these things in there, and you can still pick out identifiable, unique flavours. They don't drown each other out. They work in unison quite well. What isn't so good is that I think that all of these different casks or cask finishes or whatever's gone into this whiskey, it really drowns out the base spirit. You can't really tell that this is a 24-year-old whiskey anymore, in my opinion. And that is a shame. But what I will say is that the Black Art 5.1 it is one of the better Black Arts that I've tried. It's definitely better than the Black Art 7.1, which I was a little bit disappointed with. Probably the other question that everyone's going to be asking is, is this worth the money? Because this is a really expensive whiskey. This particular bottle, when you can find it, the 5.1, it's on sale for around £300, 
So you can get a lot of other really exceptional whiskies for the price of one bottle of this. And mainly due to the fact that all of the different casks in here really disguise the fact that this is a very old whiskey. I would say it's probably not worth the money. I think because you don't get the benefit of the full age of this one, you really can find other whiskies available for a much cheaper price at a much cheaper age that probably are as good as this whiskey. I wouldn't say better, but you can definitely get similar things, similar level of quality as this whiskey for a much cheaper price. So I would say get it if it's cheap. Definitely if you can find it as a bargain somewhere, definitely well worth your time. Other than that, I would definitely recommend trying before you buy. Thanks for watching and please let me know what you think this is made of, what casks have gone into this in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.